Come to your head, me or Ben? <gasps> ben. <laughs> <laughs> but hang on, but me or Ben what? Just in general. To hang out with or other things? What? To hang out of. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, wow. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate those challenges of modern day life. No, I've done that wrong. <laughs> the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas like what's the best remedy for sunburn and... Where is a good place to hide your gigantic cloner willy dildo? And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual agnants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not Jordan North. I'm more Eminence. You're more M&Ms. That's from Matthew Maslow, which I quite like. I've had M&Ms in ages. Have you not? Oh, you bought me an M&M bar on that place we're not allowed to talk about anymore. Yes, when we were away, uh, oh. I uh, in the supermarket... Oh, I need to come on to the supermarket in a minute. Uh, but yeah, bought you some M&M chocolate because I know you like that. And it was, for, although I think I ate most of it, but you had a bit. Mm. Uh, I'm really which... into Tony's chocolate at the moment. Okay, does he know you've got it? No, he, he, he lives next door, but one. If... <laughs> Sorry, if did I... I steal your joke Yes, there? again. <laughs> Shock. We're back, baby. <laughs> We're back, baby. Um, yeah, I'm really into that. To- have you had it before? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's good. The salted caramel one's great. <gasps> the orange one. Oh, Delicious. so good. Yeah, what else? I mean, Do you know it? about why it's in funny? Have you read the packaging? Why it's in, You know, when you open it, it's in weird yeah. shapes. It's not even. It's And the thing, it says, well, life's unfair. What? Basically, and that's why it's like, I yeah, like it's it. in funny, weird shapes because that's life. I like it. I'm really think, into that and Satsiki at the moment. Together? <laughs> not together, no. <laughs> Yeah, what do you put your sats- what do you put in your satsiki? Oh, I love no. oat in it. Oats, oat, anything. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah, I love love it. Um, Is that satsiki on you, your lips? Do you have chocolate in the fridge, <laughs> or are you more cupboard? Mikey likes it in the fridge. I prefer it in the cupboard. See, I'm, it depends what chocolate for me. Oh. Kinder Buena, cupboard. Mm. I like it when it's a bit gooey. Tony's chocolate too hard for the fridge. I like it in the cupboard. Mars bar, cupboard. Oh, else. So hang on, there's nothing. Oh, there, okay, everything else fridge. I'd pretty much say fridge. Okay. Um, I don't mind keeping it in the fridge, but then you take it out for half an hour to come to room temperature. Yeah, but then what's the point? Yeah, but when it's when it's like break your teeth hard. <laughs> oh, but yeah, like I that. do prefer like yeah. If if you're getting like lint, like a nice lint dark chocolate, that's nice. Do you, milk or dark? What do you prefer? Gun to your head, go. You're dead. <laughs> 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 Depends what mood I'm in. No, milk or dark? Go dark. Fine. Oh. Hear me out as well. Yes, I prefer dark chocolate digestives. <gasps> oh, I don't like digestives. Controversial. Mm. But I prefer milk chocolate obnubs. M- what? Milk, milk chocolate obnubs. Did you just say monk chocolate? Milk chocolate <laughs> obnubs. <laughs> okay. Do you see how many calories in an obnub? <laughs> What? What's going on? Have you seen how many calories are in Obnob? I'm having an ADHD day, leave me alone. Um, I've, there's like 90 what? calories, that... like 80 of calories in Obnob. Right, mm. is that a lot? Um, ben, gun to your head, milk or dark? Milk. Adam, gun to your head? Dark. Okay. What about you? Milk. Really? Yeah, this side, milk. Your side of the studio, dark. I do like dark chocolate. How about white chocolate? Where do you stand? I love white chocolate. Do you? I love any chocolate. Okay. I love milky, again, um, chocolate buttons, milky chocolate buttons, whatever they're called, fridge. Mm. Mm. Penguins, Rockies, Wagon Wheels, fridge. Right, well, just before everyone tunes out, let's do the toast. Sorry, I thought that was very good content. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, come on, you try doing four show, radio shows a week. This is all you're going to get. <laughs> um, I'd like to toast... My lovely neighbour and her lovelier, soon-to-be husband, Leanne and Tom, who get married this weekend. Remember Tom, during lockdown, Tom and I used to dock on the terrace yes. with our homos. Uh, throwback to series five, I think it was. But to Leanne and Tom. To Leanne and Tom. The very best. Oh, baby. Is that helping? Start just drinking more braces in now. Yeah. Doesn't matter now. Because my brother's got them as well now, my older brother. Oh, really? He's got the old Invisalign. And, um, and have, have Wendy and Graham got them yet, or are you still waiting? Are they still waiting? To pardon? Be, 
When Wendy, you know Wendy was lining you up to do her teeth. Oh yeah, yeah. I got drunk in Benidorm. Sorry, not allowed to mention it. And I said yeah. to me, I said to me dad, I got drunk. I went because he he got me and all my brothers, all four of us, a watch for our twenty first birthday. Mm. The watch I'm wearing now, my Brightling, my dad got for me, and I love it. Um, so I said, when you retire, we're all going to chip in and get your watch. And my mum and she went, I want new teeth. I'm like, <laughs> well, you're not retiring. <laughs> So it's going to be, I'm going to have to do Strictly now to get in my watch and new teeth. Yes. Watch this space. Anyway, <laughs> as always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to print and not working again. No, but Jordan, equally, we've been doing this help for... Help at sexofmyboss.com, or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram, at sexofmyboss, or you can write to William, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply in his own letter on one of our luxury greeting cards of executive self-seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextifyboss.com. How much does he invoice this month? He says I haven't done any because we've been away. I think in a he place. has a quiet week at English Manor, which, by the way, <laughs> a mutual friend of ours told you you're doing really well. Thank you very much. I didn't know. Yes, we're doing all right. It was all Luckily. Through, it was all to do with that bag that's behind us. What, that? Yeah, you've had a good, good quarter, apparently. <laughs> In the old English manner. Luckily, I mean, if you remember at the start of this podcast, yeah. um, 48 years ago, I would sit here and say, it's going to end my career. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we're still working. Well, so, See, this yeah. podcast has been great for you. Yes. Yes. Well, it's done all right for you. Yeah. I can't complain. No. Luckily. Um, anyway, when we were in the place we're not mentioning, you dramatically announced, and we were very excited that we had a new content stream. <laughs> Although you'd only done it once, in a previous life, before you joined Radio 1, when you were still living up in the Northwest, you were a secret shopper. Yeah. Please tell us all about I it. I only did it once. I didn't like it. And it just weren't worth it. By the time I paid for petrol and parking. What did you have to do? I made about eight quid. <laughs> so I went into Superdrug. Mm. I had to ask for loads of items and see how well... And then I had to rate them and see how good their customer service was. And at the time, yeah. how good was their customer service? Well, you know me, I'm too nice. It was awful, <laughs> but I said it was great. <laughs> I can't remember what I had to ask for now. You had to go in and be quite difficult, which I didn't like anyway. Oh, that would have been a stretch for you. I know. I won. I know. <laughs> so it was uh, super drug in Blackburn. Right. Is it still there? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think, yeah. It was ages ago. And then, obviously, on my other side hustle was... Uh, Being an Airbnb host. Airbnb host, host which is now in all the local press up north. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know what else you want. No, I can't really remember it that much. I remember I went up in car. Do you think we should get you to do a secret shopper now? We could do. And you've got, like, a supervisor, and it's all on email. You never met anyone. Could have been a con for all, but I got paid. So you just meet people on email, and then you have a quick phone call, and then they ring you up and take you out. And that's a secret shopper. That's a secret shopper. Wow. Yeah. I'd quite like to be a secret shopper. I've done it. You'd be great. Oh my God, you'd be great at it. I did it quite recently in in the Netherlands for a client and I was, it wasn't really sort of that secret because the management knew, but the the people on the floor didn't know. That was for a hotel. So um, it is quite fun. Did you have to be difficult? No. Do you I'm remember, just normal. Do you remember the hotel on Channel 4? Which, by the way... No, I didn't, yeah. ...was one of the greatest British Fly on the Wall series of, of the past 20 years, it's got to be. With, was it Mark at a hotel? Yeah. You never watched it? It was I, probably on about 10 years ago. I vaguely remember it, but I didn't watch it. He had a hotel in Torquay. And he's at, honest to God, he's at, he was like the real life Basil Fawlty. Please, Gene Devers, get in touch if you remember the hotel. You should bring it back. And he was just, he was up and down like a blue arse fly and the cameras <laughs> just followed him and he would run this failing hotel in Turkey and one one episode they got like a secret hotel shopper in mm. and he asked for a cup of tea to be brought up and a Kit Kat and the amount of shit this Kit Kat caused because they didn't have any Kit Kats they're trying to send people out to get they had like all the staff out <laughs> looking for Kit Kats but that's good that's good customer service how was it for you in in Dutch in, in when, Dutch in Holland <laughs> Uh, yes, it was fine. What, um, did, what sort of thing did you do? Well, I, one of the things that made me smile was that, that and again, this is what they would call Dinglish, which is Dutch English, but it said, um, it, when you went into breakfast, it said, uh, please wait for our hostess to be seated. So, oh. so, it's like, no, no. Please wait, comma, for our hostess, comma, to be seated. 
not please wait for a hostess to be seated because otherwise it sounds like you have to wait for the hostess to sit down before you can go in. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was fun. Uh, and that's really that level of detail I was going into. I can't really remember much secret shopping. It was, it was like an hour's work, if that. I'm trying to think more about it, but yeah. No. Maybe we should send you out now. I'd love to do it again, why not? Yeah. Get um, in touch, Superdrug or any other pharmaceutical firm. Um, can I ask you, I've got an etiquette question for you. Okay. About saunas. Now, not about those sort of saunas, about regular saunas. I haven't been in a sauna for ages. In the sauna, so I went, when we were away in Paris before... Um, did you go to a bathhouse? No, I did not go to a bathhouse. I was in the sauna in the hotel. And I didn't, I realised I had forgotten to pack my swimming trunks. So I thought, oh, I don't want to go into the sauna without my swimming trunks. Anyway, luckily, as most sort of spas or sort of pool areas do, you know, they sell a few in case you forget. So I bought some swimming trunks. Oh, from the hotel, but that cost you a fortune. Yeah, they weren't cheap. And, and also a little bit tight on the leg. Fine on the waist, but quite restrictive. Because, anyway, as you'll see in our comments, your legs are massive. You've got thighs like a trucker. <laughs> Honestly, you'd make Jack Grealish look like ben, Ben's legs. <laughs> I've got very pronounced calves, The yes. car and your thighs. Yeah. Gee, anyway, carry on. I think who described them the other day as Mince's calves? Mince's calves. <laughs> look like the Hulk when his shorts are ripped and he's transforming into the Hulk. <laughs> anyway... I, uh, I went to, anyway, so I bought these things and then I sort of went into the sauna and there was, a, there was one guy already in there and he obviously had a towel draped around his waist. And obviously, I say obviously, I'm fairly confident he wasn't wearing swimming trunks himself, but he was sort of had the towel wrapped around and he was sitting on the, on the wood sort of stool like that. Did I actually need to buy swimming trunks? Are you allowed to go into saunas au naturel? Obviously with the towel for modesty. What country were you in? Paris. Oh yeah, Paris Which is I think fine. is in France. Yeah, I, if I ever go in in, in the gym, mm. it's very rare to do because I get bored in them. I go in in my boxes at least. In your boxes? Yeah, the one, yeah, because I'm going to change into fresh but, ones if I don't have okay, my swimming trunks. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. And so you've got a towel for modesty? Yeah, a towel and boxes, yeah. So, I, okay, so I could go, could have gone in, because I'm not, I don't do saunas a lot. I f yeah. Also, he might have been looking for some. Well, he wasn't going to get any with me. But I could have saved myself the How did you know Euros. he didn't have any boxes on? Could you see his... No, his but wallet? you can sort of tell. Can you? Yeah, because it was sort of hanging loose at the side. Uh-oh. He might have had a thong on. Well, he might. Yeah, true. But I don't think he did. Okay. But okay, so sauna etiquette, you don't need to wear... Was he an attractive man? I've, to be honest, I didn't look at him. Okay. Massively. It was all a bit steamy. That's it was a all a bit steamy. sauna. Do you prefer steamers? Gun to your head, steamers or saunas? Oh, for God's sake, steamer. Okay. Steam room. Gun to your head, steamers or stormers. What? Uh, <laughs> steam rooms or saunas? <laughs> saunas. Gun to your head, me or Ben? Ben. <laughs> but hang on. But me or Ben what? Just in general. To hang out with or other things? What? To hang out of. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, wow. Gun to your head, gun to your head, gun to your head. You. Ah! <laughs> You're shorter. Um. Anyway, got a little bit sick in my mouth there. Don't joke. Talking no. of which. Let's move on. <laughs> I, continuing the, the class and sophistication of a couple of weeks ago, and our big thing that we're not mentioning anymore. The weekend after, I went on my friend Leanne, who's getting married this weekend, as we've said, her alt hen. I've had so many DMs about this. I've seen so much <laughs> video footage of this. Our uh, friends Chelsea and Hattie organised this particular part. I'm disowning myself from this bit. Uh, and the whole point of an alt hen or an alt stag is you do alternative things to a traditional stag or hen do. Chelsea clearly did not get the memo. I love Chelsea. She's oh. such a laugh. Her and James are such a good laugh. Well, I've deleted Chelsea's number now going forward because she made us go to Magic Mike Live. Yes. At the Hippodrome. Yep. In London. I had a really good meal there eight years ago, but carry on. Did you? Mm. Okay. Um, well, I didn't eat anything. Uh, and let me tell you, I thought we went to a matinee and I thought, oh, a matinee. <laughs> How bad can it be at a matinee? Wow. Well, if that was the matinee, I would hate to see the 11 o'clock show. Let's put it that way. It was obscene. 
Can we get that video footage no. up on our, please, on our social media, the one you sent me? So, so William got a personal lap dance by one of the Magic Mike guys, and it's absolutely hilarious. So can I say, there were about three men in the audience, other than the, the men on the stage. And to be fair, I was sitting there watching the show, and I thought, well, if I were running this show for comedy lols, towards the end of the show, I know what I'd do, because all the women were getting the attention. And to be fair to Magic Mike, can I also just say, or well, Magic Mike Live... <laughs> There's a whole narrative about that they do, which was fantastic, because it doesn't start like that, and then there's like a bit of a pivot. I won't spoil it, spoil it for anyone. Um, it's all about consent and permission, and it actually has quite an important, important message. They should do it in schools. And it... <laughs> can't have magic night <laughs> giving... Can't have blokes <laughs> giving kids lap dances. No, Come on. no, no, no. But maybe they can just do the dancing bit. Um, anyway, I thought what would be fun is... Well, not fun, but funny is that obviously they're doing all the attention and the lap dances to the women, they pick one guy out of the audience. Well, clearly I'm thinking like the producers because that is exactly what happens. And I am sitting looking straight ahead or straight ahead as I could get. I'm looking forward. I'm not making eye contact with anything that's going out around me. And I just feel my chair go backwards as I get pulled back by one of the, the mics. Amazing. And off he goes. And the... It's the funniest video. Should we yeah. play it? I well, you can play. I'm a bit worried about putting it on social media. Also, what's the etiquette? When someone sends you a picture of them in a white vest, do you then zoom in on their patchy skin? <laughs> <laughs> it just looked like you'd been using fake tan. So I was a bit like, what's going on here? Okay, show me the video. This is so... We've got to put this up on. Oh, you've got your glasses on. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. It's proper going for it. Oh, you've, oh, you've got a fiver on you. <laughs> it's fake money. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, little, let me tell you. You've got a little damp patch as well, <laughs> haven't you? His bottom was harder than the beds in Benidorm. <laughs> then we've got to put that up. Put oh, well. over the video. Um, anyway, so that was it was an interesting experience. And um, yeah, I felt slightly violated. I'm not going to ask you how your week's been. I'm going to ask you how your summer's been. Because it's the end now, isn't it? Really? Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I think September's pretty warm. Mm, no, but like the summer months. Yeah, okay. We've had the bank holidays, yeah. so I guess. Uh, that's always the end of the summer. How's your summer been? Well, obviously there was a, a big sort of slight blip in the middle of it. Um, but... Uh, what, what was that? Ole! But other than that... <laughs> Benidorm. Yes. Yes. Oh. Um, no, no, no. It's been fine. It's been all right. How's uh, your summer been? I love the summer, but I'm ready for the autumn now. Yes. I do. I, the summer's my favourite time of year, but it does get to this point now where, even though we haven't had much for summer, I'm ready for the autumn. You yeah. know, leaves on the ground, put your big coat on. Yeah, Mikey said to me the other day, the thing he says every year, oh, I can't wait for sweater weather. Sweater weather, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to going to the pub on a Sunday and it not being cold, but a bit cooler and going for a nice little... It's, it's Guinness season for me now. Oh, is it? This is where I start switching over to Guinness. I've had the odd couple, because usually lager for the summer. Okay. So, yeah. So that's mm. nice. We also need to get a date in, because also on my other podcast, the Keeping Appearances podcast, we're coming up to talking about this episode. So actually, you and me sitting down to watch it. What would also be good research. The QE2 episode. Oh, okay. Okay, we yeah. need to, I'll come over to yours, you come over to mine, I'll make it however easy you like. And it's only an hour, I'll watch it and go. Okay, just email Seb and we'll sort it out. <laughs> Seb's my agent, by the way. If for those of you that... The day you get me to email Seb, the day this podcast is over. Why? Because we're friends. I don't need to email your flipping agent. He looks after my diary. I don't think Seb looks after your social diary. No, that's true. Uh, I'll send you some dates. Also, I'm on my uh, like last lot of braces. Are you? Yes, yeah, so I'm nearly finished them. And uh, my dentist was... Oh, she, you have to hack in between your teeth like so to make a little gap so they move. It's the worst part of it. it, 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 it they like get a little metal strip. Oh. And just go, Did I not tell you that? No. Just doing that because they like to keep you calm whilst doing it. It's, I can it, see why. It, um, she she um, never, ever spoke about what I do of anything like that, but she said she'd seen the dildo clip. <laughs> which, it's been mad, isn't it? which is just mad. I cannot believe and she's got a sore in your mouth. Yeah, so which is mad. She said a uh, her husband showed it a uh, he got sent in a WhatsApp group, mm. the cloner Willie, and she showed it her uh, and then 
she said she went all funny and her husband then said do you know him and she was like i can't say Cause yeah because you know client paid patient, patient confidentiality. Confidentiality. i was like oh you can tell him i don't mind i bumped in to my uh former therapist the other day <gasps> in otterlingi because I don't know if we've talked about this. Uh, I sat Can you explain them. what Ottolenghi is for our non-London... <laughs> uh, it's just a cafe. He's a... he's a. have met him. Have you? I was on Saturday Kitchen with him. Oh, really? And he's got okay. lots of cookbooks. I'm, I'm, there's a lot... Of, some, most people know, but for those who don't, he's got lots of cookbooks. He's got sort a, of Lebanese cookery. He's a, he's a yeah. fantastic cook. Yeah, Very good of course cook. Ben loves him. I mean, I love him as well. He's He is brilliant. And you mm. should definitely get his cookbooks, a brilliant But. Yeah. He was in one of his cafes. I was in one of his cafes just getting some lunch because uh, I was around the corner for something. And uh, and my former therapist was in there. And anyway, it was fine. I mean, I sort of had slightly sacked her. But, um, and I found someone else. But, uh, yeah, so that was ever so slightly awkward. Because, you know, but that, she, I mean, she lives look, near where I live. But Did you look deranged? I didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. <laughs> How rude. Uh, anyway, she was very sweet. She said she asked nice things, like, you know, how did the wedding go, etc. So uh, that was nice. Anyway, let's crash on. Jordan's jolly joke of the week. The Pope is handing out miracles to kids. Already love it. What? I already love this joke. Okay, it's not as bad as what you think, and I'll tell you the punchline after the break. All right, Gene Davis, thanks for sticking with us. The Pope is handing out miracles to kids up north. Right. Well, that's hang on, that's an additional piece of information we didn't have in part okay. one. So he's hanging out miracles to kids up north. And Billy walks on stage and asks him, Can you help me with my hearing? The Pope says yes and puts his hands on Billy's ears and prays. He moves his hands and he says, How is your hearing now, my child? Billy says, I don't know, it's not until next Wednesday. <laughs> Do you like that one? Yes, because also I thought that joke was going in a completely different direction. Yeah, so. I won't tell one of those. Yeah, no, that's funny. Yeah, thank you. Marvellous. Well, look, the British Podcast Awards are coming up, Gene Divas, and there's still time to vote for us in the Listener's Choice Awards, no apostrophe. If you think the dildo shoebox and igloo stories are worth the win, then all you need to do is head to sexedmyboss.com slash vote. We'd be very grateful. I got another joke for you. This is... I. Uh, the person who sends me these, I should be offended. I failed my biology exam. The question was, name something commonly found in cells. Apparently, northerners isn't the right answer. <laughs> yeah, you should be offended. Right. Uh, okay, shall we go on to the listeners' problems and questions? Yes, this one is from S. Dear William Jordan, EPB and Diego, my beloved best friend of 15 years has finally become engaged to her lovely partner. This is obviously exciting news. I had hoped to get the couple an engagement gift to cherish, something for them to keep. However, being a recent graduate living in London, my pockets are not currently very deep. What can I do to celebrate their engagement on a very tight budget? I had considered making a gift, but at 22 years of age, I worry this would appear cheap or crappy for want of a better word. Please help, I'm desperate to join them in the excitement of it all. All the best. S. Ass. Ass. S. 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 Time. Offer time. What, in so, prison? No, no, no. To say, so, my, I'll never forget this. A mate of mine was skint once, and he said to our friends who got married, I, I really can't, I thought this was such a lovely gesture. He said, look, I'm a bit skint at the moment. I can't give you any money or present, but I'll, um, I'll decorate your, bed, uh, your bedroom for you. <laughs> Well, he wasn't a decorator, but he offered. No, it's, it's a jack of all trades. <laughs> right. So he decorated their spare room for him. And I thought that was lovely. That's nice. They paid for all the materials and stuff. So just say, look, if there's anything I can. I think that's a really nice look. If there's any. If you yeah. if you want me to come round one day and bring some beers around and we'll do your garden, or you need help with a tip, or you want me to look after kids, that kind of thing, mm. offer that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's nice. Or just write them a really nice card. Like write some really nice. Get a card. It's quite cheap. Just, just write just write how you feel, how much you value the friendship, yeah, how much say. you love them as a couple and are really excited. But I wouldn't, within any of this, whether it's Jordan's suggestion of time or the card, I don't think you feel the need at 22 or whatever age you are to go, oh, I can't afford anything, blah, 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 blah. So here's this. I would just do, do what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and really, if they're a friend, they shouldn't then go, sorry, you're not getting us... You're not getting us money yeah. for the honeymoon or something like that. Uh, we, we get these a lot and I would never think twice if a, if it was my birthday or I was getting married and a friend didn't give me a gift. I, would ne I wouldn't think, oh, 
you just think, oh, right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it. No. I genuinely wouldn't. No. And yeah, and if they do, then they're not, again, we've said, I think we've said this before, but they're not your friend. Mm. Um, and also engagement gifts. I mean, traditionally, going back 50 years, you probably would have given an engagement gift and then a gift after the wedding. But I think now because people have been living together for so long and sort of the courting process is so different, there's no need to give anything. Send a card, great. Yeah. Even if you are giving a gift, still send a card with just a couple of words in it. But I don't think you need to give a present. Last time I came to your house mm. for dinner with yes, um, Jonathan. Jonathan, I got your candle, but I forgot to bring it. <laughs> and I've just used it since. Right. So that's quite bad, isn't it? Yes. Was it a nice candle? Yeah, it was. Okay. But I'll get I'll get you. Was I'll, it a dick pick candle, as you call them? Dick pick. It was a dick pick. No, it wasn't, actually. Oh, okay. But, mm. Anyway. I think you brought something. You yeah, brought wine, didn't I you? I brought wine and yeah. something else. What else did I bring? Anyway. Yeah. Well, don't worry. It was, it's not Sorry. about the gifts. This is from Charlotte. Dear Jordan, William and PB, my friend recently broke up with her boyfriend and has been struggling a lot since he moved down to the house. As I have been looking to move and escape my nightmare flatmate, my heartbroken bestie suggested I stay in her spare room for a week so to cheer her up and to give me some much needed rest... <laughs> It's a much needed rest bite. It's respite. I only found out recently it was respite. I always said respite. Did you? So don't worry. Okay. So it's, I, it's with a P. Yes, it's with a P and it's one word. Respite. Respite. Well, I always thought it was respite. R-E-S-P-I-T-E. <laughs> find out what it means to me. Very good. I was looking forward to spending time with her and having a bath as my flat only has a shower. After relaxing, after a relaxing evening and a few glasses of wine, I told my friend that I was heading up for a bath before bed. I walked into the tiled bathroom and prepared my bubble bath with glee. I then started taking off my makeup and as I did so my heart nearly stopped. In the mirror I could see a shadow standing behind me. I whipped around, but there was no one there. The bathroom door was still shut and locked. Thinking I must have imagined it, I quickly finished removing my makeup and oh climbed into God, the I've bathtub. Chills! What's going on here? <laughs> the warm water and scent of lavender instantly calmed me down, and I lay back into the bubbles. But it was short-lived, as all of a sudden I felt like somebody was pinching my nipples. I looked down, but there was nothing there. I scrambled out, dried myself. Where and... the hell is? What the heck is? I've got, I've got a goosebumpy. I scrambled out, dried myself, hurried into the spare room and got into my bed, my heart pounding. The next morning I convinced myself I had imagined the whole saga and decided not to tell my friend. While there had been no nipple pinching since, some strange things have happened. The other night I heard a man's cough in my room, and on Friday I was having a bath and I distinctly heard a loud plop coming from the toilet. My friend said that she has enjoyed our week together and, seeing as I have been so desperate to find another place, I could move in with her. I'd love to live with her, but the fear of a ghostly nipple pinching pervert is playing on my mind. How do I politely decline my friend's offer without- Get out, run, don't come back. Don't pull it, oh my God, is that a ghost? <laughs> How do I politely decline my friend's offer without hurting her feelings or coming across as a lunatic? All the best, Charlotte. Charlotte, get out, run. Just don't worry about offending. Oh my God. Yeah. So it's a ghost. Well, if you believe in all that. So she, you, well, I don't know if I do and I don't know if I don't. I'm agnostic to the whole spectre Charlotte, world. Charlotte, I won't worry about being polite. I'd just get the hell out of there. Yeah, I think, look, it's not, your, it's not your friend's fault that there's potentially a ghost or not. But I would say to your friend, I, to be honest, I felt there were a few ghostly goings on. I'm not comfortable. I'd love to live with you. I just can't live with you in this house. But if you move, let's let's chat. Yeah, oh God. That's all you need to say. My biggest fear that I have in a haunted house. Well, you did. You had to get I a know. ghost. Yeah. But I got my Irish friend to... Bless you with holy water. I mean, never had any problems. So you could try that, Charlotte, and then go back and try another week. Yes, your, your Irish friend Kieran was his name. Kieran. Kieran. Okay. Well, can, is Kieran available to hire? Did you ever meet? Did you ever tell me about Owen? <laughs> is, who's Owen? Was, well, he spelled. Well, we had all our names on the cupboards because you know you got to sign the cupboard, and I was like, "Who the hell's he, Ogahan?" So we called him Ogahan for the rest of the right. Uh, it's pronounced Owen. Three years. Yeah. Oh, so Kieran, Ogahan, and you were. Uh, Eogaham was actually a Scouser, but, uh, <laughs> but he was Irish. He's from the world. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's nice. You've got to sign a cupboard. Mm. Wow. How big was this cupboard? Just normal cupboard size. Normal cupboard size. Yeah, uh, I think that's Since a... gone back, and our halls, because shock, I left it to last minute. So we was in like the worst halls in Sunderland. 
And it was honest. I'm not even saying it. It was like a prison cell. It was like bare, brick, big, what the big brick blocks called? It's changed since then. Breeze block. Big breeze blocks. That's mm. the one. Big breeze blocks inside. You couldn't even stick posters on because they just fall off with blue tag. And uh, I've since found out they shut it down. Condemned. Mm. But yeah. we had a laugh in there. I bet you did. You'd have, you'd have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, Charlotte. I would. I would. You, the issue is not with your friend. It's we with the, the election the of Barack Obama. In the communal bit, it was probably one of the best nights of my life. Yes, we can. This next one is from Tom S. Hi, William and Jordan. When I was at university, my housemate Tommy was a stud and had a different girl over most nights. Anyway, he started to settle down with this one girl, Alice. Trying to be a good housemate, I always tried to make an effort with everyone's significant other. One morning, when heading to the bathroom, I encountered a young lady midway up the stairs. After exchanging some pleasantries, I said, Oh, you must be Alice. She replied, Alice, who the F is Alice? <laughs> it's like that song. What? Yeah, you probably <laughs> Dad used to have that on tape. Right. Yeah. I For laugh. 24 years I've been living next door to Alice. Alice, who the is Alice? I remember, well, this is clearly the inspiration. I laugh thinking, haha, good one. Her face said otherwise. I ran back downstairs to the relative safety of the kitchen. The next thing I see is Tommy following this girl, shouting the classic lines of someone who has been caught. Babes, it's only you, no one else. I don't know anyone called Alice. After she left, I got a bollocking for dropping Tommy in it. To help others who may find themselves in a similar situation in the future, how would one go about exchanging pleasantries without dropping your housemate in it? Many thanks and kind regards, Tom S. Tom S? Yes. I don't think you were in the wrong there, Tom S. You were just no. being polite. Yeah, and I would also say... Is Tom it Tom S or Thomas? No, it's Tom S. Tom S. Yeah. Sorry. I'd also say if your flatmate is going to sort of put it about a bit and sort of... Um, have different people on the go when potentially Alice thinks that, uh, or indeed this other person thinks that there is no other person, then that's his own funeral, basically. I've got a mate like this. You just need to say hello. I would also say to anyone that you see, I wouldn't ask for their name. That's probably where you went wrong. Hmm. I've got a mate like this. I can't keep up with him. Every time I speak to him, he's got a different girlfriend. Usually barmaids. <clears throat> right, he's got a type. Yeah. And I once said, oh, hi, you must be. And she was like, no, I'm so-and-so. And I was like, I got the other, the other previous mm. one that I'd not met was over in a few weeks. Yeah. But, but Thomas, I don't think you are the problem here. No, I don't. I, so I don't beat don't, yourself up. Yeah, don't beat yourself up. You're just being polite. Exactly. You are. Uh, this next one is from Anthony. Hi, William Jordan and EPB. A few years ago, my dad remarried. Shortly afterwards, he and his new wife had a baby. I'm 18 years older than my new sibling, so whilst my father was knee-deep in dirty nappies and nursery rhymes, I had just been let loose on the clubs and pubs of Manchester. One night, after a few too many snake bites, I headed back to the family home. Snake bites at 1998? <laughs> Once in the house, I decided to make myself a snack. Jordan's favourite, ready breck with milk. Oh, Yum. I know where this is going. It was only when the baby awoke wanting his bottle that I realised in my drunken state I had mistakenly used my stepmother's extracted breast milk on yeah. my ready breck. <laughs> Several years later and the smell of milk, breast or carton makes me sick. I bet. What do you do when you accidentally drink your stepmother's breast milk? Breast wishes, Anthony. <laughs> Very good, Anthony. I'd try it. <laughs> oh, no. You know how much I love my ready breck? <laughs> what? Well, surely breast milk is just going to taste like I were never breastfed Were you not? Shock <laughs> That's where it started <laughs> So I wonder what it tastes like I mean, Probably No that's probably a bit weird to say that actually Just a touch Yeah, yeah. I was joking I was joking I was I've had ready break with um, oat milk I think it's very different mm. You know I, Oh that's another thing It's getting into ready break season now <laughs> Ready, be ready breck and sweaters. Very shredded wheats at the moment. Oh, are you? Mm. Okay. But, um, but Anthony, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything you can do. I just think you need to, uh, look, you got drunk, you did the wrong thing. Uh, don't get as drunk or don't make yourself ready breck when you're drunk. You've only got yourself to blame. But there's nothing going forward. You probably have to go to therapy if you're uh, it, in that, that way inclined. But there's not a lot you can do. The smell of milk and ready breck will probably knock you sick for the rest of your life. I'm the same mm. with Bacardi. <laughs> Is there a story attached to that? Yeah, I drank my mum's bottle of Bacardi when I was 15. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And I, the, the whole bottle? Well... Is Bacardi rum? Yeah, white right. rum. White rum. And I think it's psychological because I, I, I don't like Bacardi. I can't drink white rum anyway. Don't mind dark rum, but the smell of it knocks me sick now. Really? Yeah. 
if I smell it now and I'm like, just, there's lo- loads of people listening to this. There's, everybody's got that one drink they can't drink. Beer. Because they had it when they were, you've never even tried beer. No, but I can't do the smell. The best drink on, what's the one drink you can't drink, uh, Ben, that you had when you were a... Well, I can't have ready breath because I was sick on ready breath once when I was a boy. And also Strongbow. Strongbow, see? There's another one. I was, I, my other one, cider as well. I used to drink cider when I was younger. I can't, I can't even stand the smell of it. Frosty Jacks. Get in touch, we'll do it for bonus. Everybody listening, everyone's got that one drink that they can't have because it knocks them sick. Can't wait for that. And we're same with chicken nuggets. My cousin Janice poisoned me on them. <laughs> and then <laughs> I only recently started having chicken nuggets about... about How did she poison you? Because they weren't cooked properly. They weren't cooked properly. But aren't most chicken nuggets frozen anyway? So yeah. they're sort of like cooked and you just reheat them. But they were still cold. They were still uncooked in the middle oh, or real for days. And it was only up until the night out. I had my mate's chicken nuggets when I was drunk in McDonald's. And... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall we move on to the last letter? Yes, indeed, we shall. Uh, but before we do that, we've got a favour to ask. Uh, if you enjoyed all of this so far, could all go downhill. Um, obviously, please follow the podcast. Turn on your notifications so you can keep up to date with all our new releases. Leave us a rating and a review. That would be nice. And what else can they do, Jordan? Share this episode with someone who might love it as well as much as you do. The best form of advertising is word of mouth. So if you've got a mate, a colleague, an auntie, an uncle, a next door neighbour, a friend of a friend who you think going to love help by sex with my boss, please do tell them about it. And definitely leave us a rating and review because um, we've still got some bad ones after that Specsavers <laughs> episode. So... Look, we'd learnt our lesson, we know, but... Um, we can see clearly now. We can see clearly now. <laughs> Thanks to contact lenses. So do leave us... <laughs> Thanks to Specsavers contact lenses. So please do leave us a rating and a review. Lovely. Final one from Anonymous. Dear William Jordan and EPB, this really isn't a dilemma, but I thought I would write in to ask you for your advice on how to deal with any body issues you may experience. I'm in my 30s and I have struggled with body image since my teens. I have some areas of my body that I hate, particularly my chest. I find this doesn't make me look masculine as due to a defect, it makes it difficult to have any form of chest definition. I'm having corrective surgery later this year, which I hope will make me feel better about this aspect of my body. However, I want to be more confident in my body in general and since puberty I have hidden my body. At the moment I find it difficult to wear vest tops or to be shirtless in front of family or outside the context of the swimming pool as I find my body embarrassing, especially around body hair. I was wondering about your experiences and if you had any advice to grow in body confidence. There seems to be a huge narrative around female body positivity but not as much for men, in my opinion. Kind regards, Anonymous. Oh, I totally agree. And I think it's 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 harder these days with you just going TikTok or Instagram now and it's like oh. how to get the perfect abs and how mm. to get the best V lines. And uh, I can I can relate to this, believe the it or best, not. I, I, the best what? V lines. What's a V line? V's there. Oh, okay. I, I can definitely relate to this. I hate taking my top off and I'm very like yeah. I, I felt uncomfortable in Benadol when we had those speedos on and stuff. Believe it or not, I really? just yeah. Um, not from not from where I was standing. So I can totally relate to this. And as you get older, you do start um, you do start thinking, oh god, because I've been on every diet known and I've done all the mm. workouts and what have you. But I think with time, it just naturally comes. I, I've got to the stage now where I'm like, look, I work out and stuff. I'm never going to have a six pack. I never will. I never have. But I do like beer and pizza at the weekend. <laughs> and not all, but most people who you see with these great bodies and stuff, I personally, there's probably people listening to this who are thinking, no, 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 it's all about calorie deficit and all that. I personally think a lot of it's down to genetics. Mm-hmm. Some people just naturally, they'll work out and stuff, but it's all to do with genetics. Um, yes, and also all these these people, sort of, and, and I'm saying on Instagram, I appreciate that's sort of a bit unfair to Instagram, but sort of on social media that you see constantly doing shirtless or if they're men or bikini or whatever the, whatever the sort of the, the whatever however they identify and whatever their, their body shape, they're constantly doing these photos for validation to, you know, the, the hundreds, the thousands of people that follow them. Mm. I would say that is a sign of insecurity. If you act, They are looking themselves for validation in sort of showing off their body. There's all, all for being body confident and body positive, and that's absolutely fine, but constantly searching for that validation um, I would say they are insecure themselves, even if they have a classically more 
stereotypically chiselled body, for example. Um, but yes, we all have, we all have, you know, I've got insecurities because I have scars in certain places. I've got things that, you know, from operations that I don't necessarily want to show off. Um, ditto COVID. And in fact, literally just before we were recording, we were looking at photos from when I took you to Buckingham Palace in 2019. Uh, and I looked and went, oh my God, I was so slim. I was so in such good shape before COVID. Same, I Obviously same, COVID yeah. happened and, you know, we all didn't move and we ate too much. Um, so yeah, it's... Um, we all, we everybody has their insecurities, so you are not alone. But also, say anonymous, looking at your uh, letter, um, you don't need to be wearing vest tops, full stop, whatever your body looks like. So maybe don't wear them, uh, and wear something with a sleeve, uh, maybe. Um, but really, do not worry. Um, I know it's very easy for us to say this, but everybody's got body confidence issues, um, whether they show it or not. Yeah, and a lot of a lot more men are talking about it and stuff and it, it definitely is an issue um and like the, the people that you see that have these great bodies and stuff half the time because i follow i follow some people on on tiktok and instagram and they're just like they've got great bodies but they're like it's not about being miserable still you can have a beer at the weekend and stuff but half of them like really is, and a lot of them have absolutely no personality. Not all, but no life. No, I'm going to be speak, honest. You speak, Richard Madden did a, an interview, I think it was on GQ, and he talked about it, how he got in shape. And mm. he had this really perfect body. He's like, it's the most miserable he's ever been. Don't forget, when you see on the movies and all these models and stuff and shoots, it's well known they cut and starve themselves for weeks before because it's not natural. Mm. It's not natural to look like that. So my, my advice is remember that. That, and just small steps. Try and wear a vest top for an hour or so, but don't worry if you don't feel comfortable in it. And just because you haven't got a big chest or a hairy chest, it doesn't mean that people aren't going to find you attractive. No, exactly. And whilst I'm on my high horse, you know those before and after pictures that people put up? Oh, where they look miserable in the before. And then they, it's all to do with lighting as well. Yeah. Half the time, I'm not just saying this, half the time you look at them and think, you, you look great before. You had a great body. All you've done is like starve yourself for six weeks and train intensely. Or smile. And you now you've got a six pack, which you're never going to keep up. No. You're never going to keep on top of that. So just you look, you look great like that. Mm. I'm, I'll do this next time. I want to also talk about get ready with me videos because I've had enough of them oh, yeah. on the old TikToks and Instagram. And they're all putting on the same tracksuit anyway. Anyway, we'll deal with this next time. Jordan, what is coming up on the weekend release? I don't know because I haven't got the script. <laughs> Right, we've got um, some very funny clips of Australians trying to understand our Clona Willie episode that I think you're going to enjoy. Oh, right. Okay. So it was on Australian radio. Fine. And basically the Clona Willie is going more and more viral. Oh, right. Well, no wonder. As always, remember, listen to new episodes every Tuesday and Friday, or you can watch full episodes on YouTube on Wednesday and Sunday. And you can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexwithmyboss.com, or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. That's at sexwithmyboss. And remember, you can write to William Hansen here, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply on one of his luxury greeting cards with executive Celsius envelopes. The address for that is on the website, sextonmyboss.com. We'll see you on Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye.